All right, here we go. Sketch the region bounded by the curve. This from UH. Y equals 2 squared of X, X plus Y equals 8, and Y equals 1, then find the volume. So the first thing I always like to do, guys, I always like to see what region that is. So here I am just trying to figure out what the region is. 2 squared of X. That's going to look like that. Y equals 1 is going to look like this. And X plus Y equals 8 is going to look something like that. Negative slope with a y-intercept of, of 8, negative x plus 8. So it's talking about this fin. That's a region that I'm going to exaggerate. So here we go. I do another, another drawing because I'm about to now sketch that fin. I need to figure out. And it's probably not drawn to scale, guys. So there it is. There's my fin that I'm exaggerating. And I'm rotating about the x-axis. I'm trying to make equal distance points on the x-axis to the x-axis. So linear line here, curvy, and then linear line. Okay, I can already see what I have here. There's a cylinder right in the smack in the middle there, but oh, you can put your hand through it, through that, because that's empty there, right? So there it is. That's how I look. And I can see that I'm going to have to do two integrals because... I have a specific cross section here. Well, they're both going to be washers. Well, I guess I should have let you guys answer that. Sorry, guys. Don't be mad if I ruin the fun. But they're, but the washers are dictated by different uh, equations, the radiuses at least. So they're both washers, but notice, so what do I need? I need three things or three intersection points. I need that intersection point, which I do not know. We're gonna figure it out. I need that intersection point, which I do not know. We're gonna figure it out. And I need that one. All right, first intersection point. It's a linear line, y equals one with the square root curve. So let's find that one first. So two square root of x equals one. Divide by two, divide by two, square root of x equals a half. Square, square x equals 1 4 so there it is this num this first box is x equals 1 4 that's my first intersection and it's going to be it's going to remain that until i reach this little corner there so all those washers are dictated by the square root curve and that y equals 1 curve until i hit that corner so what is that intersection that's what we got to find out so that is the 2 squared of x and that is the Negative x plus eight. Chavez, where would you get negative x plus eight? I just I just moved the x, guys. Y equals negative x plus eight. All right, now it just becomes algebra two. Uh, yeah, I know that you can just type it in the calculator, but I'm just gonna go ahead and square it. Uh, Four square root of x equals x squared minus sixteen x plus sixty four. Uh, oh yes, yes. Man, 4x. Thank you, guys. I was testing you guys. No, nah, it was an honest mistake. Uh, and then I'm just going to move that 4x to the, hopefully it's a pretty number. Hopefully it's something that I can factor out really quick. Yes, it is. As soon as I see 64 and I see the number 20, yeah, let's see, uh, 8, 8, no. Uh, what is it? 16 and 4. Well, 16 and 4. There it is, guys. We got them. 16 and 4, x minus 16, x minus 4, x equals 16, nope, that's way, way over there, and x equals 4, so x equals 4 has to be the answer, and x equals 16 is actually a null answer, that's if it would have been uh, plus minus square root of x, but that's no big deal, so this number here is 4, that's x equals 4, now I need my third, my third intersection. So here's your third intersection. It's going to be the linear line and the linear line. Oh, that's the easiest one then. Negative x plus 8 equals 1. So let's switch them. Negative 1 plus 8 equals x. So x equals 7. I got them all, guys. Here we go. 
I'm going to call this washer one, number one. And I'm going to call this washer number two. Because there are different cross sections. Like they're, okay. Uh, the washer, be, uh, it's a washer because, it's a different washer because it's uh, created by a different expression. Does that make sense, guys? All right, so washer number one, the two equations that are affecting washer number one, here it is, so number one. So pi on the outside, integral. I'm going to integrate from what to what? Perfect. One fourth to four. Those are my intersections. The big R, the distance from the x-axis to the top of that curve. Well, that distance is dictated by 2 square root of x. Close it. Put a square on it. Chavez, I don't know what you're doing. I'm doing this, guys. Uh, pi big R squared minus pi little r squared. Factor out the pi big R squared minus little r squared. That's how we find area of a washer. Little so big R and little r. Minus, so here's little r, distance from the x-axis to that linear line, that horizontal linear line, and that is always, 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 always 1. I am going to put the square on it. Yes, I know that 1 squared is 1. But I'm going to put the square on it so whoever is grading my AP exam knows that I know how to do calculus. That's the volume for washer number one. V1. Now, how do I get the volume for washer number two? The same thing, guys. So V2 is equal to pi on the outside, integral. I'm going to go from what to what? What is that? Excellent. Four to seven. The big R is from the x-axis to the linear line with that negative slope. So that's going to be a negative x plus eight. Close it. Put a square on it. Minus. And again, the little r is just that one. And I like to put double parentheses like that. There it is. And then I just get the answers. Let's see. It looks like you could do it by hand, but I don't want to bother. It looks like you could, but that's not the point. I, I know you guys know how to integrate. What the point is here is, can we get it to an integral? That's the main setting point here. The integration part, that's just a, a, that's just a skill uh, from like last, before the semester ended. That's just, do you know how to integrate or not? So I'm gonna assume that we all know how to integrate. Is it okay if I just use a calculator, guys? Chavez, how am I going to get the pi in the calculator? Well, do it without the pi, guys, because notice that all the answers have pi in it. So do it without the pi and then just add the pi. So here I am. I'm going to take out my calculator. So let me get my calculator out, guys. Where are you? I haven't replaced the battery, so I might get a warning sign here. Guys, it's a joke. Some of, you, some, some of them don't like my joke. They're just looking at me like, uh, okay, let's just get this question over with. <laughs> All right, here we go. Uh, I'm going to, should I do Y1 and Y2? Yeah, let's use Y1 and Y2. Y1, 2 squared of X. Y2, negative X plus 8. And I don't need Y3 for 1. I can just type that number in. Uh, negative x plus 8. Uh, I put negative x plus 8. There we go. All right, y1 and y2. Let me see if I can remember that. Uh, math, 9. Uh, let's see, what's my first one? 1 fourth to 4. So 1 fourth to 4. And I typed in that one in y1. So alpha trace y1 squared minus one, I guess to be safe side, you can put the square there, but you don't need it. One squared is one. It'll still come out work. It'll still come out right. Plus, and then I'm gonna type the other integral here, math nine from one fourth to, oh, not one fourth. How come you guys didn't tell me? From four, delete, delete. From four to seven, And that is y2, so alpha trace y2 
squared minus one. I'll put the square on it just for kicks. DX. Enter. Oh, Travis, how do I turn that into a fraction like this, guys? Math, enter, enter. See, number one says fraction, F R A C. And there it is. So just put the pi next to it. So is there a 369 pi over 8? Yay. Man, the calculator is smart. All right. That was the extent. As you can see, these questions are probably a little harder than what the mat, than what the AP exam is going to give you because they they force you to do two integrals instead of one. I'm not saying the AP exam wouldn't do that. They probably would, but they're just trying to see the AP people are just trying to see if you know calculus while UH is trying to trick you. Okay. Let's turn the page. Let me drink a little bit of coffee real quick, guys. Something about the taste of coffee. It, I don't really like it, but I don't hate it either. You know, it's like, I know, but it's like you know that it has caffeine, so you're like. Uh, all right, guys, so let's see, let's see how we're going to do this one. The region between the graph, square root of x, and the x-axis between 0 and 9 is revolve about the line y equals 5. Uh-oh, we're not rotating about the x or y axis anymore. Which integral will determine the volume of this solid that is generated? So I did this one on purpose uh, because I think it's easier to see when everything is in the quadrant one. Uh, it's not always going to look like this, but the concept is the same. So always follow this concept, and you'll always get it right. And you'll see what I mean as we get into harder ones. Okay, so first, what region am I talking about? So I'm going to come up here just to show the region first. So here's the square root of x. And here's 9, so that means the y value is 3. And I'm bounded between the square root of x, the x-axis, and between 0 and 9. All right, so that means the region that I'm talking about is this. This is the region that I'm going to be rotating. And they're rotating it about the y equals 5. So now let me exaggerate it. Let me, let me go here to all this white space. I'm going to draw a y-axis, a pretty big one there, because I'm going to be rotating. Here it is. I'm going to write it right here. That's my x-axis. So it looks like zoop, there's 9. It's not to scale, but more or less. So if you want to draw a perfect vertical line here, that's fine. Just to connect it. So that's the region that I'm rotating. So here I am. Here's 5. I'm going to do a dash line. So that dashed line, pretend it's like a little spindle, and I'm going to rotate it. So I always like to choose some points, guys, to make my graphs look super legit. So let's see, that point at 9.3. Let me go equal distant point. This distance between the 5 and the 0, that's 5 away, so I'm going to go to 10 point. And then that's always a linear line point. Okay, I think I have enough points. I got three points in here. I just reflected it across that line. I'm going to connect it. That's straight. And then I'm going to put the little curvy part on this. Wow, that's probably, well, this is one of my perfect graphs, guys. And I'm going to give it that curvature. Going out of the page, going into the page. Look at that. All that is, that little funnel there is empty, right? All right, it looks like it's not a complicated one. It looks pretty straightforward. I'm gonna draw a cross section, draw it wherever. I like to do it down the middle. Boom, that's my cross section. I like to do the outside fat so I can draw the inside nice and neat so I can see it. And now that I did that, I think my art professor would be happy and I'm looking at it and I'm like, yeah, that looks like I rotated it. That definitely looks like I rotated it. There it is in two dimensionals. I color coded it for you guys. And I'm gonna slow down so you guys can catch up. And I hope that you guys had as much fun drawing as I did because I actually do enjoy drawing these little thingies.
All right. Whenever you guys get a chance, go show Ms. Schultz all this stuff. Uh, there's actually a project that I want to do with Ms. Schultz about volumes like this with the common cross sections. Uh, hopefully, maybe the last four weeks of school, uh, we'll do a little project with Ms. Schultz and we'll do calculus and we'll do common cross sections, volumes of slices, and we'll do a 3D model. That would, wouldn't that be cool? I think that would be cool. Anyways, here we go, guys. What is the big deal? It's a washer. I need pi, the area of a washer, we already said it's pi factored out, big R squared minus little r squared. That's what I need to do. The big R, always do it which one, which whatever you think is easiest for you. Did I, did I even use proper English there? Always use whatever reference you think is easiest for you. The big R, and I know I didn't look, my washer is obviously not drawn to scale, but the big R is this distance. Why are you using that one, Chavez? Why don't you use the top one? Well, I would, but I think this one's easier for me. That big R is always the same. I'm looking at it, and it's always the same everywhere. Do you guys see that? So here we go. Perfect. Pi on the outside. I'm just doing pi on the outside and integrating big R squared minus little r squared. No matter where you slice it, no matter where you do the dx, it is always 5. So parenthesis, put a five, close it, put a squared. That's big R squared. Minus, here we go. I'm gonna draw a little r in black. Little r is the distance from the center of rotation to that curve. Well, first I gotta take into account the fact that I'm rotating about the line y equals five. So, okay, don't write anything down, guys, just listen. Cause this is harder to do on a virtual setting. Cause you guys can't see, cause First, I got to take this distance right here. Let me see if you can see the little arrow here. Or maybe if I prick my mouse. All right, the distance between, don't write anything down, just listen, look at the screen. So from the distance from the center of rotation, the y equals five, all the way to the x-axis, that is five. But I don't want that. I want just this little distance in black. So how do I do that? I subtract how much I've gone up, boom. And I know how much I've gone up because that curve is just square root of x. So I'm gonna go five, minus how much I've went up? Five minus square root of X. Does that make sense? Okay, parenthesis, now you can write. Five minus square root of X, close it squared. And then make your notes, guys. So I'm gonna give you guys time. Make your notes of what we just did. Put in there that the reason that five is in there is because we're taking it into account that we're rotating about the line Y equals five. There it is. I am perfectly okay to type DX on it. I know sometimes, I know at least I've had one kid uh, that it would bother her that I wouldn't put parentheses right here. And I'm like, all right, let me put it for you. So there it is. Because technically it is something times something, right? Something times DX. So it would bother her because then it would look like, Travis, that looks like you're just doing this times DX. Like, no, it's the whole thing. It's understood. It's understood in the math community. It's just a Raymond sum, guys. We're adding up all the cross sections. That's all it is. Does that make sense, guys? All right. From there, we should be able to get our answer. So let's get our answer. Oh. Uh, definitely not A. That's the worst one. Do not choose that one. Let's see. De okay, no. I take it back. Letter B is the worst one. Okay. So if you choose C, D, or E, maybe we'll be like, okay, well, they kind of understand more or less. Uh, letter D is out. I don't see five squared. And now let's see, which one is it guys? Yeah. How do we feel? All right. On Delta math, Delta math loves, don't, don't get me wrong. I love Delta math. I really do enjoy Delta math and you learn from Delta math as well. Uh, but I feel like sometimes they become robotic. They always just put the absolute value and then they just do, do this equation minus this equation always. And I get it. I know why they're doing that because if you give someone just like a list of things to do, they'll never get it wrong. But I don't know if the student is really comprehending it. So when you read the Delta math notes, which is perfectly fine, please read them. Um, 
you know, don't become a robot. Just make sure you understand, like, oh, they're just finding that length. Okay, let's go to this one. Talking about delta math, uh, this one I stole from delta math. As you can tell, you can tell real quick by the by the graph there. So here we go. It says find the volume of a solid obtained by rotating the region bounded by six minus y squared and x equals negative y about the line x equals eight. Okay. Now, in my head, man, guys, I wish I could tell you everything that's going through my head right now. Um, changing the topic a little bit. I'm still talking calculus, but changing the topic. Uh, in Algebra 1, your teacher told you that this parabola was not a function because if you do a vertical line, it crosses more than once. But yet, look, you can still graph it. What do you mean it's not a function? So it's relative to, really, they should be asking, is it a function relative to the real-world application? Like, if I put something in, you only want to get one output. So that's what they mean by, is it a function? If you get some, if you put something into a computer, you don't want two different outputs because you're trying to find an answer. So I think we should do a better job in the lower levels math of, of, of doing, you know, you'll see when you talk to your professors, your professors are probably going to hate English math teachers because everything's so watered down at the high school. Okay, anyways, sorry guys that I went into there. I was just thinking that when I was looking at this. All right, so hopefully by now you guys know x equals six minus y squared is that parabola right there. That's the uh, x equals six minus y squared. And then the linear line x minus y is this one, x equals negative y. It's the same thing as saying y equals negative x. And I'm rotating about the line, about this line. So again, I'm going to rotate it, but before I do, I'm going to reflect it to get some points. So let me get some points to reflect. So this is two away. Make it equal distance from the axis of rotation. So two away, point. That's that point. Let's see. What other point do I want? I want that point there. So I'm going to go all the way. I'm going to say that feels right to me. And then, okay, so what feels right? Right there. I think I have enough points. I wrote three points, let me see. No, it's not perfect. It looks okay, not my best work, but that's fine. All right, let's see, let's do a cross section. I like to connect these. You don't have to connect them if you don't want to. I'm not gonna connect them because then I would have too many circle, circular things. I'm going to do a cross section. Let's see, where do I do? Where can I do the cross section so I can talk about my point that I want to talk about? I want to go a little bit into the negatives here. So I'm going to do a cross section right here. <laughs> my washer is not perfect. Next time, you know what? I'm going to put in here for the next time. Uh, increase, increase graph. Increase graph to make drawing easier. So next year, they'll see all more part of the graph there. So they don't have a washer that looks like this one. <laughs> all right, guys. Uh, sorry that my washer is super skewed to the right. <laughs> Uh, I, you know, I'm trying my best here. So no wonder I got a D in art. Uh, but here we go. So our, first and foremost, is this a DX? Is that slice a DX or a DY? Which one is it? DX or DY, guys? DY. That's right. It's a DY. Okay. I'll, I don't think they can see that because they can just see this, right? All right. It's a dy. Volume equals pi integral. The lowest, the, this is probably a, worth a point right now. It's always going to be, let's see, right to left. It's oh, The big R is always that linear line. And the little r is always dictated by that parabola. So we already figured that out. Now, the, the, the lower limit is the y value. So the lowest it goes is to negative 2. And the highest it goes is to 3. Does everyone, is it, before I continue, is everyone okay with those limits? Okay, I see four people, five, okay, five nodded, okay. So there it is. 
If you get that much, you probably will get a point right off the bat if it's free response. Now, the big R. So I'm going to go slow here, guys. The big R is this distance in green. All right, no problem. I did it a little while ago with Chavez, and I, I, I know that I have to take the axis of rotation into account, so it's going to be 8. And then, oh, this one is to the left of the y-axis, so I'm going to be adding. No, you're not going to put a plus symbol. You're still going to be going minus. And let me tell you right now why. You want that in green, but Chavez, I'm not subtracting. It looks like it goes, it's a little more. Yeah, but look what the equation is, guys. It's x equals negative y. Okay, don't write anything down. Just listen. I'm going to go minus a negative y. And then close, close, square it. Now, don't write anything down. Just listen right now. The reason why it's minus a negative y, guys, is because when the cross-section is up there, look what that y value is. My y value there is 1, right? For this one, for this specific cross-section. Well, if I plug in a 1 in here, well, look, I have a negative there. What's minus a negative? Plus. Does that make sense to you guys? So this will take care of every cross section. When you're in the negative section or negative zone, quote unquote, I don't want to say negative because they're really positive y values. That will take care of this. It's going to turn to positive and it's going to be adding positive, positive, positive. But when you're down here in black, don't, don't write this down, just listen. When my radius is this distance, yeah, well, look, my y value there, that it is going to be subtracting. Negative one, one minus a negative one. Uh, negative times the negative of the positive, so it's going to be 1 minus 1. It's going to be subtracting it. Do you guys see that, guys? Or, or do we not see that? Ask questions, guys, because I can't read minds. Wait, I'm confused. What? Can you just, like, re-explain the 8 minus <laughs> negative y? Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes. So the 8, are you okay with the 8 there? Yeah, wait, no. Well, okay, no, that's fine. The 8 comes in because I'm not rotating it about the x-axis. I'm rotating it about the line x equals 8. So the distance between, and I'm going to draw it in black, this distance between here and here, that is 8 no matter what. That is 8. That's 8 right there. All I need is that little green part right there. See, so that 8 has to be there no matter what. I'm not rotating it about the x or y axis. Now, how do I get that little sliver? Well... I get that little sliver by subtracting whatever this equation is. And I know you're like, well, why, why can't I add that? Uh, because what if that equation was on the other side? You know what I mean? The equation is X, you're always going to subtract. The equation is X equals negative Y. And when Y equals one, look, let's just go right into it. When Y equals one, how do I find this radius? Well, that's going to be eight minus a negative one. Oh, look, the radius is nine, which is true. Do you see that, guys? It would still work. Like, let's say I'm on this one. Like, okay, so Godina said, well, what about when you're over here? What if your radius was this one here in green? It's, it will still work. Oh, I have passed the center of rotation. Oh, man. What if the radius was this distance right there in green? Well, remember, this linear line is still x equals negative y. This y value is, is negative 1. That's y equals negative 1. So let's see, 8 minus... That negative is coming from the equation. That negative is coming from the equation, negative one. It will still work. This turns to a positive. Oh, look, that's seven. Well, let's see, is this seven? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yep, that's seven. Oh, I don't even bother looking at the right side because that, well, that side is not helping me because that's not my original and I'm gonna get confused. Yeah, you know what I mean? But it should still work because they're both technically the same thing. All right. Uh, did I answer your question, Gonzalez? Yes. Okay. Guys, if you want to be a robot, just do center of rotation minus R minus whatever the curve is. It will always give it to you no matter what. Uh, this, this only gets tricky when there's funny things happening like this one. It only gets tricky when there's funny things happening. Okay, now you can write stuff down, guys. Put some notes in there. Hey, what's up, doggy? <laughs> um, 
I have a question. Why don't we do for the other problem zero minus the equation? Oh, I'm about to. We haven't finished yet. Uh, that's a big R, right? I haven't finished little r. Oh, yeah, you can do zero minus if you want. Uh, well, for like the other problems we've done. Yeah, for like when we're finding area. Yeah, yeah that's when you're finding si uh, uh, like the region. Yeah, you can do zero minus, uh, but we're going to square it so it doesn't matter because okay. we're going to we're going to be squaring it. You know what I mean? Yeah. All right. So that's big R right there. So put in your notes that this is big R. Minus little r. Little r is this distance here in red. That one's easier to see, I think. Eight minus, it's easier to see because it's it's in the positive side. Eight minus whatever this curve went, and that curve went six minus y squared. Double parentheses in there, guys, on that one. And then dy. And I would leave it alone on the reading. I would leave it like that. Cool, guys? Okay. And then, yes, this is one that you would type in the calculator. Because look what it says, nearest thousands. So just type it in the calculator. I'm not concerned about that. I think you guys are good with calculator usage. Let's keep going. Oh, look at this. We have an FRQ, guys. Do you guys want uh, a head start? All right. Uh, some of you guys want a head start. Some of you guys don't. Uh, take a five-minute head start, and I'm going to go ahead and start writing a little bit of stuff. Uh, if you, this is a good time to go to the restroom if you need to go to the restroom if you don't want to do uh, this question right now. If you are close to figuring it out, to figuring out answers A and B, keep going, guys. This is a calculator question. Find the area of R. Well, all I got to know is which one's on top, which one's on bottom. I got to figure out the intersection point. So I already have it in my calculator. I took some uh, some trials to get it to look like the the way it looks on the pay, on the exam, but I got it to look like it. There it is. I need to find the intersection point. So the first thing I do is I'm going to write in here, I'm going to go 1 fourth plus pi plus sine, 1 fourth plus sine pi x is equal to 4 to the negative x. You do not have to show algebraically how to do it. You can just type that x, that x value immediately. x equals, and I'm going to go to my calculator to figure that out. So here's my calculator. Second, calculate, number five. Enter, enter, I only have those two curves. When it says guess, since there's two intersections, just get closer to that one, and I'll give it to you. There it is, point one seven eight two one eight zero five. Let me see if I can remember that. Point one seven eight two one zero five. did I get it right? And then I'm gonna store that, you guys already know how I am. I'm gonna store that to A. I like to go down the alphabet, guys. The only letter I will not use is letter C, because sometimes C is something. So I go A, B, and then D, and whatever. So there it is. I'm going to go to my home screen. I push X. I'm going to go store alpha A. I got enough. So here we go. Region R is equal to, or maybe you say R equals, integral. I don't think you need to say R equals, but I, I already did. Equals from 0 to A. And then what line is is on top? It looks like the g of x is on top. So I'm going to write g of x, which is perfectly fine. If you want to write 4 to that negative x, that's fine. Minus, and they give me names, so I'm going to say f of x. There it is. I go to my calculator, and I'm going to type that out. So let's see. g of x is my y2. Math, number 9, from 0 to hero, okay, that was lame, I know, guys. Uh, and I'm just gonna go g of x minus alpha x. So alpha trace, y2, minus alpha trace, 
y1. Put x in there, enter. There it is. Oh, it's a small number. I was expecting bigger. 0 0.0647. Point zero six four seven. Zero six five if you round it. Zero six four would would be acceptable as well. There it is, guys. Region S. I gotta find that intersection. Uh, what is that intersection? Is it a one? Don't tell me it's one. No, I don't think so. It wouldn't be that easy, right? What is sine pi x equals four to the negative x? I want to say one only because I see fours all over the place. But I'm gonna make sure of that, guys. Just go to your calculator. Here we go. On my graph, again, I'm just going to find it. Second, calculate number five, intersect. And then first curve, yes. Second curve, yes. Guess. Scroll to the one that you want. So just get closer to it. Come on, buddy. Uh, that's close enough. Enter. And yeah, it's a one. I just verified it. That's x equals one. If you were to solve it, I guess it would come out to x equals one also. So now we don't need any special letters for that. Do not store that to B. It's just the number one, guys. So I'm going to say region S is nothing more than integral from A to one. And what lines on top? F of X, F of X minus G of X. Close it. And let's see what that answer is. So let me get my calculator. I have F of X and Y1. So second quit. Math nine from alpha A to a one. And I'm just gonna go Y1 minus Y2. Alpha trace, Y1 minus alpha trace, Y2. There it is guys, Point four one zero three six. Point four one zero oh, three six. Three digits minimum, but I always like to do more. So there it is. We're done. Well, we're not done with the question. Uh, here's the big part that I wanted to talk about. This one. They're being nice. And they're not always nice, guys, by the way, but they're being nice on this one. They're being nice because everything is in quadrant one. And it says, find the volume of the solid generated when S is involved about the horizontal line, Y equals negative one. And there's a reason why I put this one in here. So here's negative one down here. I'm going to say that's negative one. And I'm rotating region S, guys. So let me see if I can get these points here. So those are the three points that I need. So let me see if I can draw them perfectly. Okay, let's see. Yeah, it's pretty good. Let's see if my washer comes out okay on this one. Uh, yeah, let's do it at the biggest section. Hey, this washer came out really good, guys. That's probably my most symmetric washer in a long time. There's a lot of dead space on this one. So here's what I remember how I told you guys, try not to be a robot, but being a robot will always work. All right. If you wanted to follow Delta math and being a robot, it will always work. I'm actually curious to see the key on this one. The big R, this is what, I'm, what I really am interested, the big R. The big R is the distance from the axis of rotation all the way to the top. If you're a robot and you listen to what Delta math says, I'm not, I'm not hating on Delta math. If you're a robot and you're just interested on, on the list, like, well, the list says to do uh, whatever the R, uh, whatever your X of the rotation minus whatever, whatever. And yeah, that will work. Absolute value, negative one minus uh, the F of X. And that will work. 
uh, and you can't even tell where the absolute value ends, right? Uh, that will work, guys, but I, would, I, I don't like that. I don't like that at all. We're not robots. Look, let's do it without being robots. The distance from the axis of rotation to the x-axis, what is that distance? No, uh, the distance from the axis of rotation, the y equals negative 1, that's why I'm spinning, just to the x-axis. That's just 1. Do you guys agree? Look, there's no negative there. And then the distance from the x-axis to the top of that curve, that f of x, that is just... Chavez, why are you writing on this one? Because I'm not a robot, guys. You, it's the same. By the way, it's the same. If you go negative 1 minus f of x, look, it's the same value. But notice, if you put an absolute value, yeah, look, it's the same. Do you guys see how it's the same? No? The, the value... Oh, uh, I said, what is the, okay, let me write it here. Distance, and I'm going to put distance in quotes, from y equals negative 1 to the x-axis. Yes, you can, you can pass this AP exam being a robot, but I would like for you to, you know, understand the concepts. Did I answer your question, uh, Via Kana? Yes. Okay. Uh, do we have any issues there with uh, big R being 1 plus f of x? Odina? All right. Here we go, guys. You think you're good, right? Don't worry, I'll, we'll, we'll, we'll chat more about it right now, miss. All right, here we go, volume. I want it for region S, region S. It's gonna have the same limit as the area of region S. So from A, which I already defined, all the way to one, the big R is the distance in green there. So it's gonna be one plus F of X. Put it in parentheses, put a square on it. Minus the little r. The little r, again, it's the same thing. I'm going to write little r over here. Little r is the distance from the axis of rotation to the x-axis is still 1, plus the distance from the x-axis to that curve, that's g of x. See? 1 plus g of x. Put a square on it, dx. There it is. Type it into the calculator. I, I'm going to do that as well right now. Someone do it the other way too, negative one minus f of x with it squared and see if you get the same thing. I'll do it, I'll do it with the negative one minus x squared. Uh, pi, math nine, alpha a, I think it should still be there. One, parenthesis, negative one minus uh, f of x was y two, or Y1, Y1. Alpha trace, I'm just doing it with minuses, guys, so you can see that it always works. <laughs> Watch it not work, right? Uh, negative one minus alpha trace, Y2, close, squared. X. Sorry, I just saw the chat box, guys. Oh, man. Okay. Enter. 4.558. Did you guys get that answer? If you did it with the positive ones? See, so it doesn't matter. Uh, 4.558. All right, how do we feel? Do we feel okay? Okay, perfect. Let's continue. And look, on this one, they weren't so nice. I think uh, I think we're I think uh, some of you seniors need to go right for something about uh, somewhere. You got to go somewhere. 
All right, so we're going to continue this lesson on on Monday, guys, because some of you guys need to go. Uh, but if you have time, if you want to give this one a shot, give it a shot. Oh, we haven't even looked at the rubric. If you got to go, guys, go ahead and, and you may log off. That's fine. Uh, let's look at this rubric. And this, this will be the last one we do. 2005 FRQ1. So let's look at that rubric. One drive. And then we'll call it a day right here. Oh, that's not it. I got to go to calculus, college board, your response, A, B, scoring guidelines, 2005. All right, here we go. Uh, they use little a. Man, these guys, uh, they're so funny. Uh, all right, f of x equals g of x, blah, blah, blah. f and g intersect at that. When and when x equals 1, let a be blah. 0 to a, g of x minus f of x, and we got that answer. Notice they give you three points. One point for the limit, one point for the integral, one point for the answer. Good job. Good job, guys. We got it. We got all three. Letter B, from a to 1, f of x minus g of x, 0.410. And again, three points. Not surprised that they made those three points, three points. So even if a kid doesn't know how to do volume, they got six points out of nine. That's crazy. All right, here we go. Two points for the integrand, one point for the limit, constant, and answer. Wow, they took a lot just to get that one other extra point. Uh, pi on the outside, a to one. Look how they did it. f of x plus one, perfect. Minus g of x plus one, perfect, with a square on it. dx, 4.558 or 4.559. If you would have done the, the list way where you always where you just memorize, oh, it's always whatever axis of rotation is minus your equation. Yeah, that's fine. You would get the you you would get the right answer. You would get the same thing, and you would get the points as well. And there it is, guys. Does that make sense, guys?